Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome to uh, what is going to be such an exciting and fun um, room. Uh, we are so thrilled and honored uh, to have um, the movers and shakers uh, here in Southern California, uh, the kind of keys to the kingdom, if you will, um, all these different incredible casting directors uh, who are the front lines, uh, really, for um, what we... Uh, what we do and, and, and getting people in the room in front of artistic teams. So we are honored to have uh, each and every one of them. I'm gonna introduce them all one by one. Uh, so first up, we have Lindsay Brooks. And we're gonna spotlight her video so you can all put a face to a name. <laughs> I know it's gonna happen. Terrifying. by looking through a million and one people. Um, oh, I can help you, Jeej. Lindsay Brooks, there she is, ladies and gentlemen. Yay. Lindsay Brooks, uh, who cast for McCoy Rigby. And uh, then we have the incredible Joy Doing. There she is. Joy Doing has uh, cast everything from Broadway national tours and now currently with the Disneyland Resort and doing incredible things there. Uh, we have the, the. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Love it. The man, the myth, the legend, Michael Donovan. Woo! Woo! Uh, incredible human being. And um, I've always loved going into his, his room. We have uh, working with him as an associate casting director at Michael Donovan Casting, Mr. Richie Ferris. Yay! And then the gorgeous and stunning and, and always gives you the most incredible hug when you walk into a room, Miss Julia Flores. Yeah. <laughs> Casting, of course, for McCoy Rigby and Broadway and national tours and all kinds of incredible things here in Southern California. And then we have, uh, of course, uh, my main squeeze. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Amber Sneed, I'm gonna find you. There's so many amazing people here. Amber Sneed, is she still here? I didn't see her before. Yeah, I think she popped off. Maybe we popped her off. Well, she'll probably pop back in, hopefully. Um, well, Amber's name. Yay, Amber's name. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we have, uh, then of course, where are you now, Mr. Uh, Bren Thor Johnson, the new uh, casting director for Musical Theater West. Uh, new ish, right? When did you start, Bren? officially? Uh, about a year ago, okay. a year and a half maybe. So I'm the new kid on the block and I can't wait to learn here with everybody else. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, great. Um, so, uh, okay guys, so we're gonna dive into this conversation. Um, there are so many uh, topics to discuss um, and I'm gonna, uh, for letting everyone in our room know, I'm gonna be asking a bunch of questions, some for each and every one of them and some uh, directed specifically at one or um, and uh, and then eventually uh, we'll open it up to a few questions at the end. Um, if you have questions, you can of course pose them in the chat, uh, and um, any of our panelists can answer them either privately or publicly uh, if, if they see them, or we can of course ask them in the forum uh, later. So um, I'm going to get going with um, I have something for uh, this is for Michael, Julie, and Amber. Uh, but let me have uh, Michael, Julia, and um, uh, Lindsay. Can I have you guys talk about, um, so actors access, when this is kind of like the front, front lines for, for actors to be able to get, trying to get an appointment and to not have to stand in line, right? So, um, and hopefully, um, let me see here. Hopefully now we're on microphone view, I'm hoping. There you are. Um, yeah. Okay. Great. Perfect. Um, so, um, how what help people understand how they can stand out on actually how how to get an appointment if they don't have a personal relationship with you? Um, if you can let us know, like the best way they can um, focus. Uh, you know, obviously the, there's a resume and the and the headshots, but how important is like for example having uh, a reel or some kind of online content uh, in making a decision whether to call someone new in for a call or not. Let's go to uh, Michael first. Um, I think part of the mistake is to work to try to stand out. Uh, that, that worries me a little bit, that you're doing something that is, you're wearing something outrageous or outrageous colors behind you. I think 
th th that actually scares me off as opposed mm -hmm. to intrigues me. I want, you know, I want a great looking resume. I want to see that you've trained. I want to see that you're serious about this. It'd be great if there was a real, uh, it'd be great if your pictures actually looked like you. Uh, it would also be smart if you were submitting something that you were right for. Um, it's very frustrating. The first pass, I'm sure, Julia, you were into this too. The first pass is like, what are these people doing here? Some of them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So we eliminate the ridiculous and then we get down to the serious ones. I don't think there's anything in particular that you can do that makes you stand out. I want the, I want a professional person who's uh, treating it professionally. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, and I, I, I do, back when I used to go through, the, through them along with Amber, um, uh, seeing people like looking like they're naked or looking like they're whatever it is like they were doing so many crazy things to get you to look at their photo and i couldn't agree more that um there there people can go to to go too far to try to stand out so i think that yeah. that's it's good the same thing about when you're making a choice as an actor if you do something just to be noticed there's no truth in it there's nothing organic in it so it's, i think the same thing applies here so. yeah 100 percent. um so julia what about you um, I agree. I mean, I echo what Michael's saying. I think that um, it's really, really, really important to make sure that your resume is is tight, that it's put together, that you've you've listed the show that you've done, the role that you've done, where you've done it. Because the girls and I always say, if they don't list the theater, I'm assuming you did it in your dad's garage. Right. <laughs> because it could be anywhere. And the director who did the show. I'm just talking purely about theater because... Right. That's the jam. Um, but so I, that's, that's huge. That's huge. And for me, I absolutely, like, I, I agree with Michael, a training is, is huge. So if you don't have the experience per se, the training's, the training's big. Like I'll bring people in based on where they just graduated from. Mm -hmm. um, UCLA's got an incredible program. And mm -hmm. so if they- Amazing teachers, thank you very much. You know, I, I don't know, a couple of them are kind of <laughs> sus. Um, uh, but so I just, I think that that's really important. I also, um, the girls and I do a lot more now on video than we ever have. Yeah. Um, for us, that's the way we kick the door open because um, yeah. I can only, I'm only one person and Kelly and Emma are freaking fantastic, but we can only see so many people in person. So video just really kicks the door open. I see probably more people on video than I do in the room now. Yeah. And it saves my clients a ton of money it seems because to be... we don't have to pay a companist, reader, facility, all that. It really seems to be the way of it uh, now and, um, and more and more. And so we're actually, we're trying to, we've done some, some talking about this, but just investing in the right lighting, investing in the right background and the proper way to kind of go about putting yourself on tape. Um, and I, I do think it's incredibly important. And so I'm glad that, glad you touched on that. Um, so, uh, now I know I'm working on something right now where it's all video. Um, where we're literally working on casting a million dollar quartet and it's oh. all on, you know, we're not seeing anybody in person. So obviously online content for you and websites and um, all that has been incredibly important to your casting process. Do you want to touch on that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I think especially right now with what situation we're sort of finding ourselves in, um, we are going to be digital for a uh, amount of time. Yeah. Um, so uh, for me, at least specifically with the process that you and I have been going through, you got to have a website and you have to, have to put your email on that website. Oh yeah. Uh, I have tracked down so many actors in the last couple weeks to the point where I've even had to Facebook message people, which makes me feel weird. Um, yeah. but I will do yeah. it. Uh, but yeah, I would love, I love a website with just, even if it's just your website, your resume, your email. I don't even need anything else other than that, just so I can get in contact with you easily. Right. Yeah. Amen. Um, it's a, it's amazing how, um, 
especially um, not everyone can write well on audition forms, and oh which God, is a huge thing. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> yeah. please make sure your number and your email right? and the Lord in heaven are uh, clear as day. Uh, a lot of people say don't write them on your on your headshot or resume to me if you don't, unless it's your agent's information, because you don't want that to get in the hands of some crazy person if they happen to get a hold of your headshot. But um, but making sure that it is, oh, and or some contact information like your email is on your website or accessible because yeah, we don't want to go through social media. It just feels weird. I totally get you there. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. Okay. So this is for everybody. These are going to be kind of some rapid fire, fast answers. So also we do have Amber Sneed. I believe she Yay. is. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Amber Sneed, my, my work wife. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen. We're so excited to have her in the room. Um, and, uh, so this is for everyone. Um, uh, how important is the attire that you wear and are there, if there's a pet peeve for you, whether it be, uh, shoes, a do or don't, oh, <laughs> Jeanette, I was saying hi, my wife. Um, so if there's a do or don't, um, what would that be? Um, so give me, Lindsay, you're the one that's up on my screen right now. Um, attire in the room, do you have any like big yays or nays? Um, um, I don't mind dressing to imply characters, I suppose, but please don't come in full costume. Well, you know what? Let me rephrase this question because that is okay. one of my questions. I think it's a great thing. Let me ask these four questions and Got then it. all of you guys answer these in as concise a manner as you can. Okay. So anything that you, that you say are big do's or don'ts in wearing things to an audition, um, people ask all the time, do I wear the outfit? that I'm wearing in my headshot or just give a similar feel um, to that? Or is that important at, not, at all? Come dressed to reflect the role or the show or the period or whatever that you're going for or just uh, go and be you? Um, and then do you come to the callback in the same outfit that we saw you in um, at the auditions? Okay, Lindsay, go. Okay, uh, so um, do, uh, please don't wear costumes um, for me <laughs> uh, or bring props. It freaks uh, me out. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't mind dressing to reflect the role. Um, uh, for example, when we had people come in for the Office musical, they came in in suits and that sort of thing, which I sure. think is great. Um, I don't think you have to wear what you have on in your headshot, um, but I do like people who wear the same outfit that they wore in the beginning to callbacks. That just helps me. Yeah, track who them. You are. Yeah. Great. Amazing. Okay, let's go to Joy Doing. You deal with now at Disney, you deal with like people by the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds all at once at the same time. So um how important is attire for you in trying to track people? It's only important when it becomes a distraction. Mm. Um I my suggestion is to be in the world of the show. Mm -hmm. that you're auditioning for so that you know if you're auditioning for mama mia it's a beach party so right. wear something that 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 doesn't distract us from picturing you in the world of the show right. um you wouldn't wear a jewel tone dress and nude character heels to a mama mia audition because right. that would be distracting right. um and then for disney it's the same thing you know if you're if you're doing a more contemporary character, that's a different sort of vibe than if you're doing a Cinderella or a Prince Charming. Right, so just coming in, like you wouldn't audition for Rent or Ragtime in the same outfit. And exactly. Just kind of, yeah, go in like that for sure. Uh, Michael. Um, I'd say come dressed to reflect what is going on. Yes, without costumes, absolutely. You know, a hint of something that maybe makes it look a little more period or a little more contemporary, whatever it might be. Pay attention to what you're auditioning for. Mm -hmm. If it's fairly gene generic, I think you should wear something that's flattering to you. I think great colors are important. Nothing that is distracting from your, you or your work. I don't want to be paying attention to your t-shirt or your loud tie or whatever it might be. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and yes, I feel very strongly you should wear the same thing to the callback because I always say they fell in love with the girl in the purple sweater. Oh, she's wearing green today. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Why are you fixing it? Great. Richie Ferris. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, yeah, not a whole lot to add that wasn't already uh, 
addressed. I really agree with all of that. You know, the only time maybe you wouldn't wear the same thing to a callback is if you received a specific note about, yeah, don't wear that, that doesn't work, which does happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. Or maybe there's a dance call and, you know, obviously maybe what you wore does not work for that. Uh, the other thing that I would touch on, uh, this idea of the headshot and the look of that, yeah, what you wear in the headshot has nothing to do with what you wear in the room for an audition. Sure, maybe you you love that outfit and it might be appropriate for things, but I think that's just more uh, happenstance. But what I would say is, and when we say have your headshot reflect how you look, you know, people will do things with their makeup or with their hair that they never actually do in real life because they think that makes them look better. Um, but it's like, but then you never actually go to an audition looking like that. So it's really, uh, you, you want these headshots to, to, you know, pop and look like you and everything, but don't overcompensate and look like you never actually look because you think you look great in that picture. Cause that's not a proper representation of you. Cause that is your brand, you know, and that, that, that's, that headshot is everything in this business. Amen. All right, Julia Flores. See, it's easy coming after Richie and Michael because all I have to say is, yeah, did it. <laughs> <laughs> we will go reverse alphabetical order, by the way. So, first no. Oh, well, no, 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 because that'll just mess me up. Yeah. <laughs> I do not like being on this side of the camera. You guys know that. Like, I just like, I'm like, no. Uh, so, well, yeah. you're amazing for doing it. Uh, Amber Sneed. Yeah, I. What Julia said, this is really easy now. And just echoing what everyone else has said, one minor thing, um, which is kind of random and funny and silly all at the same time. I personally hate character shoes. And I thought that I was alone and it was my own, my, it was just my weird thing. And then I was in a group and on a panel actually, and someone else said it. And I went, oh, I'm not alone. And it was just like everyone on the panel said, yes, no character shoes. If you audition for Carl Warden, he will hate you for it forever. So <laughs> just I agree. Don't, don't do the don't do character shoes. I, I agree. agree. I feel Yay. like yeah, I, I I love that. And I think that um, character shoes do kind of make you feel amateurish. Like, you know, a little amateurish, like you're just out of school and yeah. like these are my theater shoes when it's like yeah. mm, we use them in rehearsals and I we try at 3D to avoid at all costs having a single pair of character shoes on stage because it's not what people wear in life. Right. They're great tools for dance class and to audition in a dance audition but um, you do not need to come sing your three minutes or your 32, 16 bars in character shoes. I think they're smarter. And, too. A, and a follow up to that, speaking of dance calls, for me, it throws me off as, as Richie was kind of saying earlier, Michael, when you fall in love with the person in like the blue sweater, for me, the dance calls, when we watch you dance and I'm right to watch, like writing down sometimes, oh yeah, those were awesome leggings she had on. Like that was cool legging girl. And that's how we identify. And then when you come in to dance and you look like a completely different person. It's the same. So, yeah. So I don't know how other people feel about that. But for me, when dancers change clothes to sing, then I'm like, wait, who is this? Who is this? Mm -hmm. That's not the girl that had the leggings, was it? You know, just, so that's just for me. I know you want to get out of your dance clothes and look nice. But for me, I'm like, who is that person now? Mm -hmm. Good point. Anyone have a, um, before I move on to Brenda, does anyone have a follow up to that thought? Anyone are you going to talk it? about headshots at some point? Sure are. It's going to be the next thing <laughs> I want to ask about. Yeah, uh, right. yeah. So before we move on, so Bren, um, what about you? Anything to add to that? I mean, everyone, everyone has already said it. I, I had a thing to say about headshots, but maybe I'll save that for, for your conversation about headshots. Well, yeah. So we'll, we will dive right into headshots and we'll go in, in reverse order. So you'll be first up, my friend. Oh, great. Um, so headshots, um, I will say, having been um, for a, a while, like the casting person for 3D until I was so thankful to bestow that onto uh, Amber, because y'all are saints. Every single one of you guys are saints for doing what you do, because you uh, give people time and you you give them you know your all as they're giving you their all and it's such a very a personal relationship for a couple minutes in the room so thank you guys for what you do but when I would when I was in that position or even you know being as a director um, I can't tell you how many times people have fallen on the floor uh, because we're in the casting process and you have to have a reason to whittle it down right and so much of the time is like I have decent notes on this person, but does anyone remember who the hell this is? Because they don't look like this at all. And like, because your brains are mush and they just start 
falling out your rear end by the end of a, you know, that whole process. And you're like, how do I, how do we make these decisions? Right. So looking like your headshot, let's talk about that. Bren, go for it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still trying to get to know as many actors as I can right now. And so specifically when I'm calling in someone that I don't know yet, I'm calling them based on their headshot look. Mm -hmm. And if they show up and they look totally different, maybe, maybe they look better for the part. And that's great, but I'm not associating those two together. Um, so it's really, you know, you don't need to dress like your headshot, but your headshot needs to represent you. Yeah, 100%. Um, so uh, Amber uh, and then Julia on deck, what do we think about headshots? Uh, well, you, you need to look like your headshot. That's who you are. That, And you need to be honest with yourself and realistic about age. Like, have you aged out of your headshot? If you've lost weight, gained weight, changed your hairstyle, hair color, those all, all of those things matter. As Bren said, you call people in based on a look and you're like, okay, yeah, this person looks like they could be fit the type that I'm looking for for this role. And you come in and you don't look like your headshot. So now you've wasted my time as well as your own. Because something, something I want to say, because that happens so often. And I think having someone in your life that really, I, I surround myself with people like this. Um, <laughs> You literally married i married someone like this um who are not afraid to tell you the god's honest truth so that you i mean like i had someone come in we had someone come in for a show who's a very well respected brilliant actor um who came in with a black and white headshot that was easily 20 or 25 years um and as much like I get that it's an expense. Like you want to, I haven't gone through all these black and white headshots from the 1990s. I want to keep going through them, but it's like as actors and, and I'd like to, you know, segue into uh, still talking about headshots, but moving into Richie and Michael, maybe uh, you can talk about this as well. Um, you know, it, actors, it, it costs money. It's like you have to spend money to make money and investing in yourself. How often do you guys feel like headshots should be changed out? How often? Well, I know it's different that's, per age bracket. Yeah. You know, like kids or kids it's change like say, daily. It's hard to say that, TJ, because you know it's different for everybody. Sure. I mean, some people just don't change for years, and some people change in six months. Right. Did you have a baby? Did you put muscles on? Did you lose weight, gain weight? Like Amber just said. I mean, the, the thing about the headshots is, you know, because we're very good about bringing in new people. I know all you guys are as well, and so it's it's very <laughs> frustrating when somebody walks in and looks nothing like what you brought in. And, and the thing is, for the actor, that means you're going out on things that you're wrong for and missing the things that you are right for because mm -hmm. you weren't being honest enough with your headshot. It, it's your business card. It's your, it's your representation. It's your way of getting in. So don't choose something where for that 20 minutes under those lights and with that makeup, you looked that amazing. It's like, well, that's not what you really look like. Then how does it help us? We need to know what you really normally look like. Having a variety of shots, sure, of course. But... We want a basic shot that's, you know, I want to hold it up in my hand and go, oh yeah, that's who this is. As yeah. opposed to like you said, TJ later, like, wait a minute, who is this person? You know? yeah. Amen. Uh, yeah. Richie, go ahead. Uh, investment, now, that's what I was gonna to touch on before TJ so aptly brought up that word is that uh, headshots are one of the best and most important <clears throat> uh, and most expensive investments you can make in uh, creating and continuing to create your product, which is you as, as an actor. Um, and, you know, of course there's classes, there's singing lessons, dancing lessons, you know, there's all kinds of stuff, but uh, uh, headshots are something that you're gonna be constantly re-upping. If you are someone, this is something I like to say, if you do not currently have an agent, uh, you know, a headshot is important. Obviously that helps you get in the door with agencies, but don't go to the most expensive headshot photographer around because what you're gonna do is maybe you sign with an agent and they're like, okay, great. Now let's get you some new headshots. And you're like, I just spent a thousand dollars though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so it, you know, it will come at different times in your life. You will, uh, you know, and continue to get opinions. You know, if you're not getting results in the room, ask friends and family, you know, does this still work for me? Um, because, you and what is going on in the business is constantly changing. So uh, you'll know organically when it is time for an upgrade. But again, don't go for the most expensive investment if it's not the time for that either. Uh, I, amen. Like um, I'm going to, because I'm also going to throw something to, Ju um, to Joy and to Lindsay in a second, headshot related. But 
just to interject with all that, A, never spend a thousand dollars on headshots. Never, never. Uh, every, you know, there are too many people with great cameras out now um, that will, uh, and it's a very competitive industry. Um, so, uh, but make sure that you are investing the right, and look at the people that they shoot. There are people that don't shoot people of color well. There are people that and, don't shoot people of oh, size well. Said that. It's a totally different lighting shooting someone, uh, someone you know, of color versus someone not of color. I mean, there's so many things that go into it. So really make sure you're going to the right person for you. And that's going to make you feel comfortable. There are people that, uh, as a person of size, that I would go to that I, I, I had went to that only shot models. And I could not have, meaning now models is like a totally different thing. But back when I was... Uh, there were no plus size models. So, um, you know, it would make me very self-conscious and uncomfortable knowing that I was not their typical clientele and they did not know how to interact with me. So it's so important that you really have, that you, you're interviewing them because they are working for you. So you really need to make sure that you're getting the most bang for your buck. I had a great question uh, in the chat that I wanna maybe pose to Joy and Lindsay. Um, it was from Elizabeth. Um, she says, as a woman of color, she changes her hair a lot braids this and that and the other thing how important is that to have uh headshots that reflect those different hairstyles uh especially since like when you're taking when you're doing a headshot session it's not always i'm sure as easy to just do that in the same session so that could be like an extra investment but how important is it if you're going to walk in with braids that you have a headshot that has braids is it the same as like facial hair Joy, Lindsay, do you want to touch on that? No, I don't think it's the same as facial hair because first of all, it's way more maintenance. Um, I'm of the opinion that women of color in general have magic hair that could be something different every time they walk in the room and I'm completely Amen. fine with that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not gonna mm -hmm. ask you to, if you have braids, I'm not gonna ask you to go and get it all taken out just so you look like your headshot. I mean, I think it's just going to be up to you to decide how you want to present yourself to the world and go with it and choose maybe one or two looks. And, um, you know, I wouldn't go too extreme with it so that you're unrecognizable, but I think you have to trust us to be professional and to do our job mm -hmm. and to recognize that you're that person. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And uh, and yeah, Elizabeth said, yes, we do have magical hair, LOL. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, these are all great. Um, Lindsay, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, no, I, I agree with that. Um, I think as, as long as your face looks like your face, um, that's kind of at least what I'm most looking at. Um, and it is different than facial hair. I think facial hair is... Um, is wildly deceiving uh yeah. and so if you have it or don't have it your headshot re should reflect that but especially yeah with women of color i think it's it's i, I think thing. It's, yeah, yeah i think it's fine yeah. um yeah that's great um Why? Why isn't Amber, yeah, Amber, I was gonna, no, I was going to literally yeah. go back to Amber and say as the one yeah. woman of color can you weigh in so. <laughs> thank you hey liz hey girl so I would say, I mean, you know, everybody knows I've been wearing this hairstyle for 10 plus years or whatever, but it's easy and to take care of and manage. So I have a headshot in this picture. However, if you change your hair frequently or you know you're going to be wearing a certain style for a while or coming back to that style, I also recommend getting a picture and it doesn't have to be like a $300 headshot shoot every time you do it. But you may want to consider, you know, like, I'm going to be wearing braids for three months. So get some pictures taken in braids. Just have a little something of whatever your favorite styles are. Maybe have a photo on file of those things. But yeah, you know, I can change my hair every day, five times a day, whatever. But uh, I think we can be a little more distinct than others. Hey, TJ, can I add to that? Yes, of course. Uh, I think uh, uh, Black women in particular have a huge advantage in that most Black actresses that I know have a bunch of wigs. So you can change your look very, very quickly with that, right? Which is great. But you got to remember which one you wore to the first call. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. That's a really good point. <laughs> Make notes. That's so a very good the point. Same, wear the same one to the callback. Or like Richie said, if you get some notes saying, don't wear that, you know, can you change your hair or whatever, great. Then you have the advantage of doing that. 
but yeah. you got to remember what you wore and what That's you wore. That's a great off. point. Yeah, Joy, go ahead. Uh, so, um, I think the conversation about headshots has changed so much. Um, we're not having the same conversation that we were having 10, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about bringing in an eight by 10 into an audition room as much anymore as more and more of us are going digital. And so I think it's perfectly fine to have, especially with Disney auditions, you can upload any photos you want to your profile. So go ahead and if you change your hair, upload another photo to your profile because we'll have access to all of them. Um, and I think a lot of casting companies are moving in that direction. So we're now talking about a thumbnail that your friend took with their fancy iPhone. Like um, I think Amber was saying, you don't have to spend $300 every time. Just get a decent looking photo with good lighting and add it to your profile. I think this is really going to change the way shows are, are cast initially, this whole COVID thing, because we're all having to figure it out. And uh, it's a great point saying that, you know, digitally, you, you're not having to walk in the room with just one shot. You can choose what you want them to see first, but having other options there is, is a fantastic mm -hmm. But Point. make sure I want a headshot and resume in the room. So, oh, you know, of course. I'm just saying like for well, the digital. Not necessarily. Because for commercially, they don't necessarily want that anymore. Right. But for theater, I, I, my clients want that tactile thing of holding a picture and resume in their hand and be able to sort and all that kind of stuff at the end. So it's very, very I miss important. those, Michael. I know, right? <laughs> and, and you know, the problem is because in Los Angeles, and a lot of times you don't need to bring it, actors are getting in, having bad habits, are not showing up with them. And it's very, very frustrating. So, especially if they do a lot of crossover, uh, people that I notice that come in that do a lot more TV film and theater, yeah. like secondary, yeah. they never, I'm like, why not? It does not, it has not weighed you down to bring a couple of headshots to your, uh, everywhere you go. You know what I mean? Like, how could you not have that in your car? So, I also think it's a strike against you. I think no, it's for sure. start with a negative. So before you're coming into the room, we have to pull you up on the computer to show the client. So it's yep. already a negative. So it's you don't disrespectful. Yeah, for sure. Um, great. I'm going to ask, um, let me have, um, uh, let me have Joy and Michael. How much communication is okay between the actor and the casting director before, during, and after the process? Joy, you want to go first? Um, I'm not really sure how to answer that question. Well, for example, like um, we get, I know on our end, people that will reach out to varying degrees, um, you know, asking like a ton of, of questions or follow-ups or where are you at in the process and, you know, trying to kind of okay. get in behind the curtain and then post, if it didn't go their way, uh, reaching out, like what's the, you know, some people like to reach out to say thank you, some people send cards, which we're gonna talk about in, in a second, but um, it, sometimes it feels like you wanna, some actors are like, how do I keep enough on their radar but not also seem like a crazy person and a stalker? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so as far as the follow-up, I think it's fine to reach out or have your agent reach out and ask for feedback. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as thank you cards, thank you emails, that's up to you. I mean, it's, it's a nice human gesture. Um, I don't expect any thanks for doing my job. Um, but it's nice if I really went out of my way for somebody, then it's nice to get a quick thank you note. Um, but it, again, it's not expected. Before mm -hmm. the audition, I expect you to read the email that you were sent with the audition information. And if you contact me asking questions that are in the email, that's a little bit irritating. Um, but again, like I get it. We're all deluged with information all the time. People don't read their emails thoroughly. I'm guilty of it too. But yeah, just, just read thoroughly all the information that's been given to you before you jump in and start asking questions. Yeah, but if something's not covered, I am more than happy to clarify or to give you more information because I want you to nail your audition. So the more I can help you do that, the better. Amen. That's great. Michael, anything to add to that? Ditto, ditto, ditto. I mean, it's all great. And, you know, Richie does our emails that go out with the information, the emails that go out with the information, and they're so detailed and have a ton of information. So it is frustrating when somebody follows up and, and it's already in there. Also, when you arrive at our auditions, we have an information sheet, which also tells you like who's in the room, what's going to happen in the room. And actors walk in and they see somebody behind the desk and go, oh, I didn't know you were going to be here. It's like, 
Yeah, you did. If you'd actually read yeah. the sign. <laughs> so it's, it's the same kind of thing where you're already putting yourself in a negative spot. You didn't do the work ahead of time. So yeah. that gets very, very frustrating. As far as the follow-up goes, um, I thank yous are lovely, not necessary. I think postcards are great. Not everybody likes postcards, but I think they're fine. Um, uh, you know, be a person. Yeah, you know, be a human being. Um, at least, you guys touched on what my next question is, which I want to kind of throw to Julia and Amber. Um, so um, how frustrating is it when you get question I mean like when you do you and your and the people that are working with you do so much work to try to answer every question of course like Joy and Michael said like if you get a question that you can actually answer uh that you haven't covered it's like oh great yes I can answer that and you do so happily but when you get nine times out of ten people emailing because they haven't read does that affect your opinion of them uh when they walk in the room like do you already feel like they've their nerves have gotten the better of them and they just are moving too quickly and they haven't slowed down to kind of make sure they've read everything. In regards to, hang on a second, TJ, do you mean, so are they asking questions in the room that have already been answered? Is that what you're saying? Um, it could be really, like, I remember talking about over email, like when they're, but because in the room is a little, a little different. Um, but like, Oh, more over email if they're it's like before they've come in for their appointment or for casting and like all of the stuff is there like should I sing or read from the show for my thing and it's like I've covered that in my like oh yeah I don't right see there. we don't even you know Kelly and Emma and I always say I say this so much time it's on the website it's on the website so <laughs> I don't even respond to questions that are already covered on the website because to me that just means that they're not they're not doing their part. Right. The reason why I spend so long making sure that everything's on the website is so that then that stuff doesn't happen. So, so yeah. And then I know one of the girl's pet peeves, Kelly especially cannot stand it when um, we have everything all laid out and what they're supposed to do. Like, cause you know, like you guys will be in there and the director will go, Oh no, no, I want to start with this scene or I want to, so then, I'll, I'll say to Kelly and Emma, make sure that you let them know before they come in the room. And then they come in the room, they're like, so what should we do? <laughs> <laughs> and she, and I'm like, girl, just keep, keep it zip. Cause like, you know, she's losing her mind. Right. Um, so, and I agree because it's like, you just, just listen, just slow down and listen. And like you said though, TJ, I honestly just think, nerves get the better of you it's nervous chatter you're not quite sure what to say and i right. get that and i appreciate right. it. it's not easy what you guys do it is right. not I, I one of the reasons why i love and respect you so much is because i wouldn't want to be you for all the money in the world yep. um it's it's rough it's rough and and so and like tj said we're all human like mm -hmm. we want you to do well Mm -hmm. that's important to us and and that not only that you do well but that you enjoy the process you spend 90 percent of your careers auditioning mm -hmm. so if you don't love it it just it just sucks yeah. it just sucks do something yeah. else <laughs> um amber did you have uh anything to add to that i sure do <laughs> I, per, I personally, yeah, that, as Michael has been saying, puts you at a negative. If you have not read all of the information that I personally have taken the time to put out there for you, and you come to me with that, I instantly hate you. And <laughs> I'm kind of going to be friendly to you when you come into audition, but it really is frustrating because I'm also, or was also an actor. And so the things that frustrate me that I see actors doing are things where like, I would never do that. I wouldn't. Mm -hmm ask that. I would never, because I've been in it, in a part of auditioning. So I know these are there's certain things where I'm like, yeah, I totally get it. I totally get nerves when auditioning and all of that. But when they've given you, when you're like, what do they want? I don't know what they want. And they've taken the time to give you exactly what it is that they want and have sent you the information. It's your job to read it and pay attention to it. And I appreciate like what Julia does. And a lot of what I have done in terms of casting and sending out information was based on a lot of what Julia was doing on her website. Because when I was auditioning for her, I could look and see everything 
that I needed to know on there or even sending an email and getting the auto response. It's like, look at the website. If it's not on there, I will answer whatever it is you're asking, but we worked hard to make sure you have everything you need. So take advantage of that and just pay attention to it. Yeah. Um, there's a couple questions here that I want to uh, touch on that are in the chat. Um, first of all, <clears throat> um, let me get to uh, Lindsay and Bren. Um, how important uh, for those that having an agent, not having an agent, um, does it make it easier for them to get in the room um, or does that matter for you? Um, can you guys touch on that real quick? Um, yeah. So for me, I cast a lot of non-union stuff. Um, so I already anticipate a lot of those people that I'm seeing not having representation. Um, it is not a deal breaker for me by any means. If your resume looks good, if your headshot looks good, if you are putting in the work and getting the training, I don't, I don't care at all if you have yeah. an agent. Great. Um, Bren? There it is. Um, yeah, uh, same here. Although uh, the more that I'm doing this, the more I'm finding how to best communicate with agents, and that has really been helpful for me. So, so finding finding out how they can help you because they can, um, but totally not a deal breaker, um, and you can totally get seen um, without one. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, great. And I want to touch on um, <clears throat> Joy answered this in the chat, but just to uh, reiterate, and I think everyone would uniformly agree. And if you don't, please. Uh, feel free to disagree, um, that your social media, people are like, how important is our social media? Do you look at it? You know, all that kind of stuff. And I know, especially for a company like Disney, um, you do not get hired there until they, they have thoroughly stocked you and make sure that, you know, you're going to be able to represent their brand, um, you know, as a, a human being and as an artist. Um, but uh, when it comes to Y'all, I think that uh, what you're putting out there publicly and, and whatnot is, is important to, to, to have, to know that it is out there for forever and people will look at it. And, um, but if, there's another question that um, is such a hot topic right now that um, I don't want to direct at any one person, but if anyone feels, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but if anyone has a quick answer, how important, and I'm sure it depends on the project, are um, followers? Like some people who have, Hundred, you know, six, you know, six-figure followers, and some people who have six hundred followers. Um, how important is that? Do you take that into consideration, or are you um, really just looking at who's best for the part? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Depends on how high-profile the project is. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's that's the thing. If we're talking about we need stars, or you know, people that are going to sell tickets. Yeah. yeah, when you're casting for the Hollywood Bowl, it's a different animal than when you're casting for, you know, Boston Court or whatever. Absolutely. You know, what I mean? it's different. Yeah, and, and that's and that's the answer in a nutshell. It depends on the project. Yep. Okay, so that it is relevant, but it's not a make or break. It probably for most work, right? I'd say for most work, Julia. Do yeah. you agree? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, talent. Yeah. It just it's talent and making sure you're not buckets of crazy. But if yeah, talented, oh man. But if they're tied. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Jeanette just had behind me. Like, if they're tied, right. if you have someone, they're both you. Um, I, would, that. I would say it's, it's, I rarely found myself in an instance where someone is in a real tie. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, for me, it's hard to, I don't think if they were in an actual tie, I don't think followers would be the, the make or break. The break. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And for, I'd say for regional theater, followers do not necessarily translate into ticket sales. No, they don't guys. They don't, they don't at all. Just so you know, like I, we've experimented with that yeah. and um, to yeah. zero success, yeah. literally zero success. Yeah. The people that, and usually the people that want to come see those people and literally from celebrity or Broadway names who are, we have found out here in California, unless you're an A-list celebrity, it, you are not a celebrity outside of Times Square. It is just people will not pay. The people that want to see those names in a show want to come for free. It's all the people that are actors that are like, oh, I can't wait to see so-and-so in a show, but they want to be on your comp list. So, but when it comes to the, the followers, 
Um, we've never seen a bump. Uh, we had a situation recently where we had someone with a lot of followers cast in a show and then they were not able to be in a show and we never noticed um, a, a blip in ticket sales. Yeah. Not a blip in, in when they left. We didn't notice that at all. So um, it's, I feel like people are putting a lot of weight into it and working very, very hard to gain followers. But in the world of theater, I don't think it matters. I know that there are agents and there are film and TV people who it matters very, very much. Yeah, um, so right. it depends on the media. I, yeah. I think more in film and television. It, it's, it's more important than film and television. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, um, so uh, real quick, um, Joy, and, Joy and Amber, opinion on starting over and asking to do something again if you feel you started poorly or could do it just better in general when you're in the room? Like, how do you feel about when people do that? Completely fine. I actually have a funny story about a very famous Broadway actress who um, did exactly that and came into her final callback with the last supper at the table and producers and everybody and um and came in dressed to the nines and looking gorgeous and like a diva and wearing a big hat with a big floppy brim and started to sing her song and stopped about four bars in and said i'm so sorry i have to start over because the acoustics are completely different under this hat <laughs> I love that. So if insert famous Broadway diva here can do it, so can you. Yeah, I love totally that. fine. I'd rather you have a good audition. Amen. I agree. Um, Amber, thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. It's your audition. So take that time that you need. If, if starting over is going to help you feel better and do better, then go for it. Awesome. Uh, Richie, Lindsay, and Bren, how has it been? Um, so you guys are... Now, Richie, um, now an associate, um, you know, and having to act, you know, in some, in some cases for Michael, because you all have to be in different places at different times. Um, and then uh, Lindsay and Bren uh, having, uh, you know, recently started, especially like um, Lindsay with a lot of the work you're doing. Um, how has it been jumping in uh, to the, how, how have you found becoming a casting director? Has it changed anything about um, you as an artist? And what, are, what is like the largest challenge and the biggest reward um, that you've found in this job? Uh, yeah, it's a great question. So um, I think I, as, as most in this field, you kind of fall in, you know, there's not really a uh, specialization in college for casting. So we all find it in one way or another. And uh, it takes a certain kind of person and, uh, uh, I think for most of us, it's extremely satisfying. I mean, I'm I, I'm lucky enough to have kind of come up on with theater and getting to work largely in theater. Uh, I'm the people that we get to see regularly. I, I'm genuinely uh, a fan of. So that's that's just such a, a treat for me, just getting to work with such wonderful, talented people. Uh, I mean, I've been doing this for over eight years now, and uh, I not to go too deep into it, but there's something really special about being the associate, the second in command in a two person office as, as Michael Donovan and I uh, run. And so, you know, we get to operate a lot at the same levels, but at the same time, uh, I get to kind of be a bit more, you know, I, I'm kind of more the one who's, who's keeping track of who's doing what, I'm remembering who we saw and when. So uh, in a lot of ways, you know, Michael is the face of the company. Um, but you want me to remember you because I'm going to be like, we saw that person at open call six months ago and we thought they were great. Um, so there's something for me that's very great about my specific, very unique uh, position in this business um, that I, I, I like being uh, the second in command who's, who's kind of watching it from a different angle. But at the same time, you know, at the end of the day, we have two voices that we bring to to the, the final, you know, casting question. So, Which is um, so great because art is so subjective. So having like opinions that bring different things to the table is always uh, a beautiful thing in what we do. I think that's awesome. Yeah, and he's uh, brilliant at it, if I might add. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah I love it. Okay. Uh, um, so I had uh, posed that question again to Lindsay and Bren. Anything that you guys would like to chat about that? <clears throat> Friend, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, the biggest challenge for me, I mean, 
Um, when I came in to this position, we were operating on a fully paper system. And so um, taking us digital um, and, and even just having a, a database on my computer where I can search people and, and attach keywords to them based on type and, and different things like that, um, it's been awesome. And stealing the ideas of everyone else who's on this panel, it's been wonderful um, to be able to utilize the information that's already out there and apply it to an organization that hasn't yet, um, which has been great. So thank you, all of you, for for everything that you've already done um, in that. Uh, the biggest reward, I casting is like one third of my job. And so I love getting to interact with people and looking for um, connections when I'm, when I'm not behind the table and, um, and then using that information behind the table. So you're right. kind of always networking and always making connections with people that you do get to utilize. That's awesome. So, yeah. uh, Lindsay, anything? Uh, yeah, um, the biggest challenge that I've run into personally, um, especially coming from someone who was an actor and who still sort of dabbles in like comedy and that kind of thing is creating boundaries <laughs> with yeah. people. Um, because a lot of these people I see are my friends um, day to day and, in, and it's very hard sometimes to um, draw the line as far as like uh we are friends but right now i'm this is a professional setting so that's been a learning process for me because of course i want to see all my friends do well and want to bring them in for everything and it, it has been a big learning curve for me to to be able to specifically say you are not right for this mm -hmm. um, oh god but it's so I will. I mean, it is the it's yeah. very, but it is um in contrast the biggest reward is you there are moments where someone walks in the room and you're like that's it there they are yeah and it's the greatest thing yeah. to just have that feeling like right away and just know i know that that's the person getting to give yeah. someone a job is the greatest yeah i'm yep. sure the word um this is amazing so i like oh god there's so many questions and so many hot topics i'm going all night long and it's amazing uh, skip a couple things, but I do want to ask Joy real quick. Casting for, you know, you've done Broadway, national tours, um, all kinds of things, as many of these people on this panel um, have, but you also, and I know Michael has done this as well, having to cast for Disney. Um, just touch really briefly on how different is, how, I, I know it's the same, but different, because for Disney, you're casting like five or six companies worth of people at a time. Do you know what I mean? Which, like, you're casting Frozen five or six times over, and so then, how hard is that? Because it's not you're not auditioning in New York and in LA and all over the world to cast these companies. You're literally casting like all these companies from the same pool of talent all the time. So how hard is that for even just quality control when you're trying to and what when do you have to kind of where's the give and where's the you know what I mean like when you're trying to do something like that? I mean it's actually kind of fun because. Um... On the one hand, you don't have the opportunity to really fine tune the casting for a particular role. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you have the opportunity to really broaden the scope of who can tell that story, of mm -hmm. who can yeah. authentically tell that story. And that gives you an opportunity to really develop a lot of talent that you might have, you would definitely have let them walk out of the room. Yeah. If you were only looking for one person to play Kristoff, yep. you would let 99 <laughs> out of 100 out of the room and you just don't have the opportunity. You have to work with the performers and help develop them and help steer them in the right direction yeah. in a way that you wouldn't if you were just casting Frozen, the Broadway musical. Yeah, um, what and I have to say I, I love about what y'all are, are doing to help lead the charge this way. And I know Disney is being very proactive about it as I know we are at 3D as I'm sure uh, everyone else on this panel, which I, it leads perfectly into my next thing, which I think if you all are willing to come back and do a panel on just this, um, because I, it's far too much of a hot topic to glaze over, but I do want to at least touch on it real quickly, which is uh, diversity, which is beyond race, it's size, it's you know orientation, age. it's age, it's all of it, right? So <clears throat> you guys have been really helping leading, you know, helping lead the charge, um, you know, namely starting with Frozen, because um, of course you had a director that was incredibly passionate, thankfully, uh, about that, um, but have always been really, really good. But that was the really the first time we've seen. 
uh, a Disney character uh, be reinvented from ra a racial standpoint. You know what I mean? Where we're seeing like a black Elsa, an Asian Elsa, uh, you know, all over the map as far as the, the uh, ethnicities and age and size mm -hmm. that is in that show, which is just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd love for everyone quickly to touch on, mm -hmm. and then hopefully if y'all are willing to come back in, a, in some of the weeks to come to do a, a, an actual just hold conversation about this. What are y'all doing to, because as you can see, we have one woman of color on this. I feel like uh, as a as a casting director, right? So you have a predominantly no, uh, white- I'm, I'm brown. Oh, are you really? <laughs> oh, Flores, duh. Sorry, two women of color. Woo! Um, I'm, I'm white on the outside, brown on the inside. <laughs> uh, I have many a friend that way. So I totally <laughs> and I have to say though too, that there's a, there, that's a whole, that's a whole thing too, because I am Flores, but I look like I'm a Smith. And, she's and, and then there's, there's the opposite of that too, right? Right, right, so, right. So the, the kind of like, what are we all ooh. doing to um, to push that forward because I mean we're in a, a predominantly less two women on this panel predominantly white I do feel like I see like in New York even the major players are white but there are a, a lot more male and female I feel like this is a, a particular job where there is a, a a better balance of men and women at, you know in um, places of ch you know uh, uh, being in charge of of uh, casting offices. But um, when it comes to people of color, it's pretty grossly underrepresented. So what are we doing um, as a community and as individuals to uh, help encourage? I always tell um, actors uh, now, I'm like, unless the show, and, and I'd love to hear if you disagree or agree, um, unless the show is a race-based show. If you're doing ragtime, the people have to be in the right places for the show to mean what the show needs to mean, right? But there are a ton of things like historical, for as an example, Hamilton cracked it open and decided to, you know, say it doesn't matter what color you are um, to tell the story. You don't have to be a lookalike, you know, someone who lived 300 years ago or whatever. So, um, you know, what are your opinions and what are you guys doing to help uh, artists and encourage them to come in for things that they would type themselves out for? Yeah. Because I know for me, I'm like, sing a song in your audition for a role. Like, I would love when people of color come in and sing something that wasn't written for them do you know what i mean like and to help change the minds of the people behind the table so yeah let me know i, I saw joy like put her hand up ah, pick me pick me <laughs> um one of the things we did is at, at disney specifically was we um we found that people were self-selecting themselves out of roles yep. based on what they'd seen in those roles in the past yep. so rather than having an individual audition for Dapper Dan specifically, because we knew a lot of people of color and people of all genders would self-select themselves out of it. And so what we started doing was um, doing an annual Disneyland resort call for all roles so okay. that we would bring in those people of all different ethnicities and genders and types and sizes and everything and get a full spectrum of humanity. And then we, as casting directors, Robbie Armitage and I, would decide whom to call back from that based on whether they were right for the role, regardless of, of all of those other parameters. And we're starting to see the results of that. This is, we're in our second year, second and a half year of doing that. And if you've seen the Dapper Dans lately, you know that there are more faces of color in that cast than there ever has been in history because of opening up our annual, um, our annual resort call and not being so specific about allowing actors to self-select themselves. Yeah. And then the and other thing a, that we're- I got to see one of my friends be one of the very first black Dapper Dans ever and it just made my heart. First, you know, it's yes. amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I th and I think real quick, also um, reaching out and developing relationships with those communities. For example, um, Ann Thomas of Transgender Talent and KMR has a, a diversity division that represents a lot of disabled actors. So just to, um, nurturing those relationships in those communities and understand how to, um, and just understand what the barriers are in the various communities. That's amazing. Um, anyone else want to touch on that if you have something to add to that? It's very important to us too. I mean, basically we put, unless it is something historically that must be a certain ethnicity, we put all ethnicities. 
I mean, our cast of Annie at the Hollywood Bowl, our, uh, what, uh, we had a black, uh, our black Roseville, and then the girl in a wheelchair did the uh, star to be. So, I mean, you know, we're just opening it up all the time. I mean, gender, sexuality, ethnicity, uh, you, you have to be open to different things. But the flip side is that when it is important, we had an incident, uh, Richie knows, a couple of years ago with fences. We were doing fences, and Equity wanted me to put all ethnicities in the breakdown. I had that with I Ragtime. Said, no. Yeah. <laughs> I fought them on it. I said, this is an African-American story. It's an African-American playwright. It's, it, it makes absolutely no sense. So yep. we were, uh, uh, we had that same thing with uh, Ragtime, where we were specifically putting like mother, Caucasian, Sarah, right. African-American, and they would allow us to put every ethnicity next to the roles except for Caucasian. We were not yeah. allowed to put that word in the breakdown at all. And I'm like, well, I understand like the all ethnicity thing, but I'm like, that's not, that's not what this show is. This show right. is specifically written for groups of people. So that's a very interesting um, conversation, another interesting conversation that we should have. Well, because um, if you don't have the racial conflict, then you miss the storyline. That's, exactly. the, that's part, the of the, point. part of it's the story. West Side mm -hmm. Story, Hairspray, um, yeah. Rackline, uh, the countless other shows that are uh, literally about that. Um, anyone else? Yeah, I, so what I see a lot of happening is that we are trying to make these changes behind the table, but actors are not helping us as much as they And so as all ethnicities, you need to go mm -hmm. there. Because yeah. what I don't see happening, that I see happening is when we are trying to cast people of uh, all different backgrounds, we're not getting that in the audience. They're not. Everyone is showing up. And so we either have to, if we have the time and can afford the time, go searching for people to help fill that. Oh, did we lose her? I think we're losing her. Can okay. I, yeah, please. Along those, can I just add to that? Because I think what Amber says is great, but it also goes back to what Julia said before. If we said something in our breakdown, we meant it. If oh, we yeah. gave you information, if we said I, all ethnicities, we mean I, all ethnicities. I think though, Michael, to be fair, and I think that this is the why that we're in such an interesting um, place in our in our theatrical culture. And what, when, I, when I talk to many friends of color, because it took us, we decided, we decided for Mamma Mia. We weren't like open to it. We were like, we are going to cast the very first two women of color as Donnie, Donna and Sophie. And they had never been cast that way before. And we're like, we're going to find them. And it took us five months because people would not come in for it. They would not be seen for it. They didn't want, they, were, they didn't care about that show or whatever. And I'm like, it's not about the show. It's about what we're trying to do. And it's about like, I mean, it took forever and a lot of it because back in the day when it said all ethnicities, that was because equity made people say that, yeah, not because understand. people were actually really looking yeah. for it. And I think that actors have really typed themselves out because it's such an expense to get in your car, spend gas, print out your resume, invest emotionally in something that they feel like they really don't have a shot in. So I feel like we as, as people who are casting um, need to be more proactive about making decisions that we are going to cast a certain role as a person in a wheelchair or a person of color, a transgender or whatever, and then really go and spend the time to find it. Um, you know, to, cause I think that that, we noticed when we did that for Mamma Mia, we started a slight increase. It was like the baby step forward of then people coming in and not typing themselves out. Do you know what I mean? So, um, but it's such an, it's very, because I think we all do truly mean it, but it's now now actors are not hopping on that bandwagon. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it's an important conversation to have. Um, so I know that we are like over time, uh, and there's so many more questions that I had for everybody. Um, so hopefully we can um, uh, meet again on here if you guys are all willing, um, because yeah. this is a uh, a great thing. There's so many other questions in our chat too. If we can maybe take um, Gigi just a couple of questions, if you can pick out a couple people. Uh, if they have anything for the panel before we sign off. Okay, now this is gonna be hard because there's a hundred of you. So, <laughs> <laughs> if you could uh, raise your hand, the first people I see, I see Raymond first, I'll unmute you and you can 
uh, share your question. Okay, Raymond, there you go. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for this incredible panel. I've learned so much today. Um, and I just wanted to, to ask anyone who wants to answer, how can we as actors make really strong choices without, as uh, Julia put it, being a bucket of crazy? Because, um, I know a lot of us have really insane talents. I happen to be a countertenor, and so that's not something you see often. And you get a lot of those like very particular talents. How can we make really strong choices without being, um, you know, too out there? Yeah. Right. You know, I, I'm I'm a firm believer in making choices because otherwise you might as well be going at least for me going into TV because like it's more than just being able to hit your mark. It's about finding the heart and the soul of a character. But here's the thing: so you you have your foundation you're grounded, you're honest, you're truthful, and then you layer on top of that. It's not the other way around. Right. And yeah. so you have to have terra firma to make, to get to that heightened spot. And, and also too, I just, less is more. Mm -hmm. Less is more. And I, I always say, the girls and I are always saying this, don't sing at me, don't speak at me, speak to us mm -hmm. and i don't mean that literally because a lot of people don't like that i don't care but a lot of people don't don't like that but i just you, if you're really connecting with with the character that you're auditioning for raymond that's all that we want yeah jeanette just said lead with, lead with your heart you know and that's so important um everything in life yeah lead with your heart yeah yeah the um i would say uh two that like for example like there are shows that you know if you're auditioning for chicago obviously you should come in and counter tenor your face off Hell but yeah. that is not a skill that's needed in every show even like in the ensemble like seeing you know if you're like gonna audition for some crazy high tenor show we want to hear you sing in that range of the show and and then if we see you know in your special skills always a counter tenor we might go oh could you sing us a little something? You know, I mean, if that yeah. buys us anything. Yep. But I would say, like, just make sure that whatever you're doing is well suited for the piece you're going in for. Um, I would say for me also, come in and make those strong choices in the scene and in the audition and in the 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 sides that we're looking at. I, don't come in guns blazing, slamming your water bottle down on the piano and throwing your book at the like. <laughs> come in and be a normal human person and treat us like normal like normal human people and then make your big choices um, yeah. rather than in your entrance yeah in your entrance <laughs> in a flourish um which happens oh my gosh yeah funny. and it, it it can't be stressed enough but uh choices and being grounded and all that it starts with a foundation of just understanding the piece and the audition and and we've mentioned that through multiple different questions uh, already in this but at, at, at the end of the day knowing what you're going in for and being as prepared and having read everything that's been given to you will sit you up for the best success with making choices and providing us with what we need um to consider you for the the piece at hand yeah. yay hey, um, you, have, yeah, you want have, one more one question more, or this will be the last one i'm just yeah. scanning for the first hand i see and i see adam Hi. Um, I had a question in regards to like if you're doing more um, like an EPA or uh, I guess uh, doing casting for a season for a theater, is it okay to, I don't want to say go away from your type, but if, if you kind of want to take that risk of doing say more of a character monologue as opposed to doing, I, I normally get put in like a leading man category, which is fine, but I feel like I'm I would want you. to show, no. <laughs> I, well, but, but, but I mean, honestly, it's like, I, I would much rather do those character roles that I find never getting the chance to do them. And I want to be able to see if, is that okay yeah. to do or would you kind of just say, look, you need to stick to what's more or less being cast or what you like our approach is. <laughs> I'll jump in on that. I think if you're doing uh, an EPA for a seasonal uh, open call, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about for like a mm -hmm. past or something like that yeah i think you need to, like richie said you need to look at what they're casting and make sure that let me just get rid of that sorry uh, <laughs> that make sure that uh what you're doing is appropriate for their season if you're just doing something just to show up what a brilliant actor you are well what do we do with you 
You know, I, I think you want to think about what's being done in the season and choose something that is at least appropriate to what they're doing. So I a, where would we cast you? Yeah, I have a fun story um, just about that type of thing where um, I know a lot of people in casting famous, but Burke Moses went into audition, tell it all the time. Burke Moses went into audition for the original company of Beauty and the Beast. And he sang, I feel pretty for his guest on audition as guest on. And he booked it on the spot. He was the first person cast in that show because it was a brilliant choice. So like doing something like that where you're gender bending something or you're just thinking outside the box <clears throat> is a great way to stand out but not seem like a bucket of crazy. Yeah, I think that, you know, things like that are, are great ways to then show yourself off too as a, as a maybe leading man and a character performer. But yeah, okay. anyone else want to answer that? No? Something. Yeah, I mean, I just the same thing. I just, I just think that you have to be. It's, it's, you know what it is, Adam. It's about, um, it's about being respectful of who you're going in for, and what you're going in for. To me, it would mean if you're doing something that's totally out of the blue and has nothing to do, because I do seasonals all the time for like different theaters around the country, and if you're not doing something that's applicable, then I'm kind of like, a, do you even know? what the season is and do you know and just don't care to me it's a red flag mm -hmm. um you know it, there are other times for you to be able to like say say you see something that that i'm doing or that one of the other casting directors here on the panel is doing and you say i have people do this to me all the time hey listen yeah jules i'll come in for that role but would you also consider me for X, Y, or Z role? And I'm like, have at it. And if I don't have time to do it in the room, I'll say submit a video and let's 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 do that. Cause I, you guys are artists, you guys are creators in the process. And so you have to have your hands in the clay. It's not about just here, do this. It's about you guys collaborate. This is a collaborative process mm -hmm. and I just, really, really, really hope that that's, if that's the only takeaway that you take away today, it's that we want you to do well. You're part of this process. You're not just a monkey. You are, you mean a lot to us. Okay. We would be nothing without you. And we want you to be our solution, you know, to the problem. Yes, uh, Joy. Um, so what I'm looking for in that initial sort of seasonal open call, that sort of audition is authenticity of who you are as a human and as an artist. And so Adam, I would say if your authenticity is being funny and wacky and being a character, then, and it's appropriate for the season. I mean, I've cast seasons that have like Neil Simon and David Mamet plays in them. So um, what, do you, what do you do for that? And I think, you know, when you can't be specific about the style, be specific to who you are as an authentic person and do what shows off you as a human and as, as an artist best. And then I can use my skill and my imagination as a professional casting director to figure out what to do with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you guys, this was the longest panel we've ever had. It was amazing. And uh, I never felt it being long because it, it was just such a joy. And um, I don't think this has ever happened where all of these amazing people have been in one place at one time, even though we're all in different places, <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, to share uh, their thoughts and um, their wisdom with us all. I'm so incredibly grateful, but uh, we're so grateful to each and every one of you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, follow us on um, social media if you have not, so that we can uh, keep you posted on what we're doing. But again, um, from the bottom of our hearts, a virtual round of applause for these incredible people who gave us their time today. Hey, thank you. Yep.